All right, in this video, we're going to talk about using content snippets in Power Pages. What are content snippets? What they are is the they're objects that can hold little pieces of text or content that you can actually place in multiple places across your website. Another benefit is that you can actually centrally store or manage a lot of your media and your content across your website. How is this beneficial? Well, especially if you want to have a centralized spot or very quickly manage content that you don't necessarily want to go through an entire ALM process of updating your website, updating page content. Content snippets makes it very easy to manage. The other big advantage, if you have a multilingual site, if you have to keep copying over the same content, translating it and copying it to different web pages, it's going to get tedious. If you are a little bit proactive and configure those web pages or those web templates to use content snippets, then when it comes to translating your site, it's going to be a lot smoother. Let's dive in and take a look. If you're interested in learning more about Power Pages, come join me on April 28th, where I'll be leading a workshop called Build Power Pages in a Day. This is all part of the Iberian Technology Summit, which is being held in Faro, Portugal. Portugal. So definitely love to see you there. We're going to learn a lot about Power Pages architecture, how it's provisioned, how it's all put together. We're going to talk about building web pages that are directly linked to Dataverse. We're going to talk about implementing Power Pages security. And then even going into some topics, we're going to be extending Power Pages with Liquid, JavaScript, and uh, CSS. A lot of great stuff all packed into one day. Really great if I could see you there. Um, spots are limited, so you should definitely get on that and sign up right away. All right, so I've got this static site here. I've added some text, I've added an image. Pretty straightforward, Power Pages 101 stuff, um, easy peasy. So let's just take a look at this site. So we're here, we see our web page. that's all good. Now, I've provisioned a couple other languages on this site. So what, what's gonna happen if I flip over to, for instance, French? It disappears. What happens is we can create the content and design studio, but it is not being translated over to the French side. So what do we do in a case like this? So at this point, what we're going to need to do is create uh, another content page to hold the translated content. So how is this done? So let's just go back to a little bit of Power Pages 101 and to talk about how web pages are structured. Everything in Power Pages is stored in Dataverse and metadata. So we're going to have a web page record stored in Dataverse. We have two different types. We have root and content. The root is going to hold things like the web page name, the partial URL, the page template, more of those admin level types of things. Typically, a maker doesn't need to worry about this when they're building a web page using the Design Studio. All of this is done taking care of, for taking care of it behind the scenes. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to create this root record. And then for each provision language, it's going to create a content record. So of course, we have default English. Um, we already have that there. It's going to be automatic. And so I have the hello world or my content, whatever I created in that web page. Now, for each additional language I have provisioned, it's going to create a blank or not quite a blank, but an empty web page content page. So I have one for French and then I have one for other languages. What we're going to need to do is go back and update the content in each of those individual web pages. Now, this can be a little bit tedious, but let's take a look to see how that's done in the portal management app. So I'm in the portal management app. I went into their content. I pulled up web pages. I pulled up the web page um, for the widget overview. So this is my root page. This is the top level one. I have the parent page, the page template it's using, the publishing state, the partial URL, and then I have the localized content here. So if I take a look at my English page and I'll see here, this is now a content page. It's still a web page, but it's just slightly structured different. The form will be different in the portal management app. I scroll down and I see all of my content here. That's great. So I can just copy that content and then I can move that over to each of those content pages, but I still need to go in and translate my content in here to make it match. If I had other code and things of that sort, you know, this is going to have to be updated all the time. It's going to be a little bit tedious to do all this. There's got to be a better way. And there is, it's using something called content snippets and we can find content snippets. If we go into the content here, I'm going to click here 
and I can create some new content snippets and we can inject those directly into our code, whether it's a web page copy or the web template. So here I've created the widget title. Um, that is the name of the, co the content snippet. I've chose the website display name. I've made that HTML and I've just put in the value widget overview. Pretty simple. I've also created a corresponding web widget title for my French site. So I've created the content snippet using now the French language. I put in the name, they have to be the same, but this time I put in the value, the French value. So we've already begun the translation of that content, but we're using snippets. Same thing with details. If I look at, I've created one here for details. Um, I've added the French translation. And of course I have the English translation here. So now we've begun to set up our content snippets and we can translate those all in one spot within the portal management app, or a little bit later, I'll show you how you can even create your own custom app that's specifically just meant for managing content. So now that we've created these content snippets, let's apply those to our web page code. So I'm back in the design studio here, and this is that static content we created earlier. Now I'm gonna go in and create, go into edit code. And this is going to bring up the VS code for the web editor. And I'm just going to go in and replace my content. So I'm going to put in something using Liquid. Now, if you've not heard of Liquid before, Liquid is a markup language for Power Pages. It's pretty straightforward. First thing I could just do, I could just type um, snippets. And I would put in the name of the snippet that I created in the portal management app, which was widget underscore title. The other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to spell snippets correctly. Um, I'm going to add another keyword called editable. So what editable will allow me to do is as a maker can still edit this information directly in Design Studio. So it's always good to make use the editable if you want to be able to do that. So I've added that for this. Now I also have my other content that I'm going to replace with a content snippet. All right, so let's add that snippet in here. Let me go. In this same thing, I'm again going to choose the, the editable keyword snippets with an S and widget title. And now I'm going to be widget details actually, widget underscore details. So now I've added in, now this has been sort of codified, hit control S. So that's going to save this back to Dataverse into the metadata. So here I'm just going to sync this back. So it's going to sync this from the metadata into my design studio. And we see here, it's pretty much the same. Doesn't really change too, too much. I can still go in and edit it because we use that editing keyword. So let's now preview this and it looks the same. Now, if we swap to the French side, it's still going to be blank because we're still going to need to copy the code. But this time we don't need to worry about the translation because we've already done it in content snippets. So let's take a look. So once again, I'm in my portal management app. I'm going to go to my widget overview, which is again, my root page. Let's take a look at the content page. I'm going to go into the English one first, because here this code is the same. We have those content snippets. So all I need to do is copy that code. Now I still need to do this in the portal management app. I can also do it in Visual, Visual Studio code for the desktop, um, but I can't do it yet in Visual Studio code for the web. So I've got a copy of this code. I'm going to go into the other content page. Actually, so go here, sorry, close this. Go into my French content page. And I'm just going to replace what's here. Get rid of this. Key in my code using, again, content snippet. So this is an exact match. Now, going a step further, which I'm not going to get into today, ideally what I'd like to do is just have this code in one spot in my web template, and then I would just use that web template as a basis for these web pages. That's a bigger conversation. Um, I'm going to save this for that for another video and another blog post. But for now, I've pasted in this code. And again, it's just straight up code. It's exactly the same. And let's take a look to see what it looks like on our site. So I'm in Design Studio again. I'm just going to hit Preview. And 
it's refreshed here. It's this content. Now when I flip over to the French side, now we actually have our French content appear because this is just being stored in content snippets. So this is great if we need to go and send stuff out for translation as opposed to pulling the web page metadata, uh, web page static data, pulling it from the different spots. If we can kind of contain this all within content snippets, it makes it a lot easier to manage. So another thing here, what I've done is, so imagine if you actually had someone that has to manage that content, but they're not all that savvy using the design studio and that's okay. Maybe they, you know, you, you know, everybody has their different skills. So this is where you could create for them a, their own app to manage the content in one centralized place. So what I've done, I just went into power apps. I've created a model driven app. I just called that content manager. Let's take a look at that app. And it's pretty simple. I just have my content snippets and my web pages in this app. So giving this to someone that's whose job it is just to manage content, they don't need to worry themselves of all of these other nuances and things of navigation throughout the portal management app or even the design studio to update content. They simply can go in and update this particular content snippets or even web pages to a certain extent, depending on how you want to do it. Again, this is a great thing about Power the Power Platform. You can build your apps to do different things. If you really wanted, you could build a Canvas app to do this as well. Maybe even have someone be able to manage this from their phones or mobile. So let's actually do something else about content snippets while we're here. Let's say that we need to actually add a content snippet for a very quick announcement. So if there's an announcement that you want to put on your website and this updates daily, maybe it's the deal of the day, maybe it's a announcement you want to put out there. You don't necessarily want to have to do this in your dev site and go through the entire ALM process. Now you might want to do that, but if it's a quick thing, maybe you just want to be able to manage it in a content snippet. So let's just create a new content snippet. I'm going to call this announcement. Simple as that. I'm going to choose my website. And again, I'm just using the this new content manager I've created. Let's call this announcement. Let's see this as text or let's change this to HTML. Again, we want to create it for our different languages. For now, I'm just going to choose the base language and my value. I'm just going to basically say, let's it's a snow day. Who doesn't love a snow day? You know, you when you're kind of growing up, it's like you listen to the radio or I listen to the radio, but now kids these days, they just go on the website to see if their school is closed. So let's just type, you know, snow day, you know, don't come in to school. And again, an administrator, someone else could just update this content snippet. Um, and that's it. They'll just have to do this. But what we need to do as a maker, we actually have to add this content snippet to our website. So let's go and do that. So I'm here, I'm just going to go on the home page. And again, if this was however we want to do it, I'm just going to add a one column. We're just going to, let's just change this, make it a little bit narrower. There, that's cool. I'm going to add the text. And this is where our announcement's going to go. Let's make this a heading two. And we'll just sort of call this, uh, we'll just put this a placeholder here for now. And yeah, that's it. So what we could do is we could, we could create this section, but again, let's go and edit the code here. So once we're here at the very top, let's find that announcement. So we just had that placeholder. I'm going to replace this with my snippet. And again, this is a little bit coding, but it's not too bad. And again, you only need to do it once. Add editable snippets, right? If we wanted to use non-editable snippets, we'd have to use the include and a bunch of other stuff. Save here. Let's do a sync. And we see our big banner up here. That's good. Let's preview this. All right. So here we can go to our site. We see snow day. Don't come into school. If we want to change that. Whoever needs to change this, it's like, you know, no snow day. And say, cool. this way, we don't have to go in. We don't have to modify that with the design studio. We don't have to go through this whole ALM process. Someone can just go in and update that content snippet, save and close that. 
and we preview our site here and we see our messages up there. So all that took was someone would have to go into that content management app and update this. And this is automatically displayed on the website. Now, of course, we could have tied that into a Dataverse table and done a bunch of other things. But this is just another example of using content snippets on your site as a way to centralize management of that content. Really hope you found this particular video helpful. And again, if you want to learn more, definitely join me um, for an upcoming Power Pages workshop.